Well, we're going to start this episode here with some uh, more finish up work. Uh, you get down to a point where it doesn't seem like things are going very far because you have things that have to be done every day uh, and not a whole lot of work. Uh, I've got the, uh, the seat is all cut out and it's got the first coat of epoxy on the inside. But I think on this one, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside. I've just finished up putting, I guess you can see it there, we tipped down a little bit. I just finished putting on uh, a second coat of uh, epoxy on the inside of all the little uh, bulwarks on the, uh, for the sides and then for in for the little Scotty bracket here. And then I redid a couple places on the sides uh, where the um, the bulwarks will go. They've got two full coats and a little bit more, but on the inside of the seat, on the bottom, it's got one coat of epoxy, but I'm going to tape it off and then line it with, uh, with tape, uh, tape it off and, and a little bit of newspaper, and then paint the bottom on the inside and then paint the inside of the, uh, the seat. But I'm going to stop right at the edge. I have already have it marked out with a pencil uh, where the edge of the, uh, the seat will go. Well, I've got the center seat here, and I've got the, uh, the center of it marked out from uh, where I had some centering lines on the front and on the back where we had the uh, part that we split together or uh, joined together with a butt splice, which became the backing uh, block for the hatch screws. And so I was able to line it up. It already had uh, uh, marks, centering marks from the molding. So I was able to line that up. And then I had a wood bit that's got uh, a little center point, and so I was able to just put it down inside and give it a little tap on all four corners. So now I got my drill out, and we'll go ahead and. down in and all the way through because uh, the, these screws won't be going through or if they do just the tips will be going through and I'll probably be using hex there's enough room in here uh, I'll either use a wood screw or I might just use a big hex screw uh, wood screw I also want to go around and kind of feel see if you've got any rough cuts or if it's not rounded enough At some point, you just have to say enough's enough. Uh, this is meant to go fishing, uh, bang around the back of your little truck, uh, go uh, down to the <laughs> down out of the water and go catch some fish. So it's going hopefully it's going to be full of fish scales and guts and uh, happy fishermen. So I mean, you can get anal with this with the sanding and the and the uh, the, the finish work, uh, but I'm not taking this to the uh, Port Towns Wooden Boat Show. And um, it's going to be somebody's going to take it out fishing. You know, it's not a showboat; it's a go boat. A little bit of the uh, cleanup of the uh, bottom and inside of the uh, little uh, spacers. And it helps you put some tape on the back of the sandpaper. There's a little more strength. Once you get done with the sand, you want to wipe it down good. Get all the dust off before you put the stain on, which I'm going to do next before I do much anymore on this boat. So just wipe it down. The other thing uh, the cloth does, it 
as you go around, you can find any little uh, projections that need to be sanded a little bit more, any rough spots. Uh, we're not looking for too, I mean, you know, absolutely perfect on the underside here, but when you, uh, uh, when we get on the stain and put on the uh, other, uh, uh, either, uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to put two coats of epoxy on or whether I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, uh, varnish, marine varnish on this. I may just varnish it, but you want to be, find spots in here that are a little, Maybe as your hand was going over it, you might be a little tender. You don't want to pick up splinters or sharp things and little fangs. And this will be where it's going to be at down in here where it's hard to sand, where you got multiple edges because the uh, stair-stepping effect on the uh, rails. Okay. And this is some 60 grit with some uh, shipping tape on the back of it to give it a little bit of strength. Oh. So much. Stains next. Well, I said in that last segment, or at the end of the last segment, we were going to start staining next, and I've got the stain out, and I've uh, uh, already put a coat on. The, it's a little bracket that goes on the inside uh, for to protect the uh, hull, and also to give it thickness enough so you're not screwing the uh, the motor mounts in and out of an inch and a half each time, and then the one on the outside to protect the uh, hull from the the uh, face of, of the uh, bolt or the support. So now we'll uh, let's go and pan down, and we'll get you in here a little, a little closer. Everybody has always been wondering about well, how is this going to turn out. So I'm not going to give you a whole bunch on on staining, uh, just some little tricks. I'll come back when I have to make a little uh, um, make a little tool with some cloth around it uh, to get inside the gaps here. But let's oh there we go. Let's go ahead and. Put a coat on here just to show you the as the wood starts taking on the color, the little stuff here kind of starts jumping out. And I'm using a Czar brand stain. It's called Colonial Pine, which has a nice, nice brown tinge to it more wood rich. You want to get some down into the end grain here on the uh, plywood too. I want to get some on top here first uh, so when I come back and do all the other ones whenever I get a little bit uh, of an extra uh, stain. I want this this part saturated uh, and then when I come back I won't be uh, darkening it up. This I find it gives me a more even stain. So I'm going to continue on around here. No use of boring you with what I'm doing. And then on the outside and underneath, you want to have to <laughs> bend over in order to see what you're doing. You'll get a little stain on the plywood underneath, but that's fine. I'll give that a good sand down before I put the paint on. And then when I flip the boat upside down, there's some places in there. Uh, I may have to sand off the uh, marine varnish to uh, get any little spots. But then remember, this is a go boat, not a show boat. So let me go ahead and continue on around. And I've started on the spacers and I've taken a piece of cloth, cut out a little bit and wrapped it around a, a little uh, piece of scrap wood with a rubber band holding it in place. Just a little, just a little bit. Just get in there. Watch out you're not getting too much in any one spot. And it's enough to get in there. Get everything. And like I said, I like to have this area stained before I start doing this. That way I know that uh, 
if I did this first, it wouldn't dry and, and maybe possibly this color. And this goes pretty quick. Ah. <laughs> and I tell you to be careful, and here I am slinging stain all over the boat. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of uh, area that doesn't want to take stain. Usually that's a little bit of squeeze out from the, the gel magic that we use to uh, clamp the spacer or attach the spacer blocks with. Let me go ahead and do the rest of these and we'll come back. Well, we'll take a uh, an unsteady cam shot of the rays. I did one thing on the uh, sides over here, the oarlocks. Uh, right in there I added another piece of, uh, of uh, four millimeters, so that gives me eight millimeter thick under there. It was getting, because I used four millimeter on the sides as opposed to six millimeter, I was getting a little more flex on the, on the rowing uh, part here uh, when you, know, you grip it in that little little piece of uh, extra piece of four mil in there uh, stiffen it up quite a bit and I've got the uh, when I put in the uh, uh, put the second coat of uh, epoxy on the inside of those things I set them in place and I, I was hoping that maybe they would drip and uh, they did a little bit and so they're epoxy in place now so all I got to do is break out the gel magic and do a uh, and a mixing tip and do a hundred percent around the edges and then the fillets and we got our bow up in here and then where the little Scotty will stick out here I uh, put in a, uh, a little piece of uh, of wood and stain that. I was thinking of painting it. I can always change my mind, but it'd be easier to, it won't be that difficult to uh, paint around it. It'll make it a little nice little color uh, to the hull too, so. So it's all done on that part. Now I'll let it set for about three or four days to cure and dry out, and then I'll put on some uh, marine varnish. I think I'm going to do that this time instead of uh, two layers of epoxy. It'll give a nice, uh, steadier uh, color. So, let me get some paint out. I'm going to paint the, uh, uh, put some primer on that on the inside of the seat too. Okay, I've got my. People keep asking me what I'm using. Where is it? I'll come up with some Rust-Oleum's Ultra Coat, Ultra Cover. I mean, premium latex primer. I've had good luck with this on uh, epoxy. So I've sanded this already, so, and I've got my, my line up here. Because I wanted to, uh, the tape is inside the line that will be, um, I have the gel magic and the fillets because I wanted that wood on wood. As the old bosun mate told me once, lay it on, take it. if you're old enough to have been in the military. Okay, let me go do the inside of the seat. Here's a little co close-up of the can. They have uh, enamel paints too. I have the uh, light gray that I use over the top of this. So 
having a gray primer and a light gray interior, it's easy to uh, not take that many coats to cover. And it's thick, so it covers well. <laughs>